Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Halt for Majority. Yes, you've made it. It's Monday. And again, by popular demand, instead of having today be a conversation or an interview with an amazing, interesting guest, you know, we've had on some fascinating folks like presidential candidates, intellectuals, academics, authors, filmmakers. You are actually like, I'm interested in what you have to say about certain things that are happening in the news. And we do this about every week, every other week or so, where I will react to things that are happening in the news as a way to make the point about the hopeful majority. Because this platform is really built around dialogue, nuanced conversations. We're trying to build a, an amazing group of people that, yes, have very strong beliefs, but believe that we, more than our just beliefs, have to have productive conversations across lines of difference. We have to see each other, hear each other. And today's two stories are, uh, one, there's a new movie that will be released at the time of this recording on Thursday, but it, it, it has been released by the time you hear this called Civil War. Yes, you heard that right, Civil War. I actually had the chance to watch the premiere last week. I want to talk to you a little bit about that movie. Um, and the second is the continuous conflict that we're seeing in Israel and Gaza and how the discourse around that is evolving and what the key takeaway and theme of these two, again, seemingly disconnected news stories is the question, are we really that divided? Last quick thing I'll leave you with before we get into the monologue and my thoughts on this of, of are we really that divided is if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll probably see me in a suit. That's a hopeful majority special number one. I have not worn a suit this entire show. We've had on presidential candidates where I've worn my trademark blue sweater where people are like, do you own more clothes than the sweater? Um, and also if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll notice I'm actually on the road. You're seeing me out in the wild. Uh, I'm actually just coming off, off of a conference where we spoke about Bridge USA and the work that we're doing in colleges and high schools. And I share that with you because actually most times I'm on the road and I don't give you too much of an insight into what's going on, but I figured I might share that with you. And so I'm holding the mic in my hand. I'm in a suit. I just came off a conversation. If you're new to this, remember every Monday, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, if you're listening to this, you know the drill. Let's get in the monologue and I'll see you with these two stories. All right. So today's question is, are we really that divided? And now I have to say that I just, as I'm recording this, I just came off of doing a keynote at a conference where it was a hundred different colleges, administrators, students, and the central question we we're asking about was just, you know, how divided are college campuses? How divided are young people? How polarized is society really? And I was talking about this question and for the solo react episode, the two news stories that I wanted to talk about were about what's happening again, the tragic conflict in Israel and Gaza and what we're seeing with this new movie that just came out called civil war. And that question has really been resonating with me and thinking, you know, I've been focused on it because if you've listened to some of the past episodes of the hopeful majority, one of the things that's become clear is that I don't actually think we're as divided as we think we are. You know, there was a new story that just came out from Axios last week that said, we're living through a political distortion machine. Sometimes, you know, some people might say I'm naive, but I've said that um, I don't think we're living through the great divide. I think we're living through the great misunderstanding. You know, are we really that divided at a time where we barely talk to people that are different than us? Or do we just have judgments to each other based on what we see in the news? Are we really that divided? Or is it the conflict profiteers out there that are slicing and dicing our, our country because there's a lot of money to be made in that or that it's easy to win an election? Are we really that divided or... Is it that the loudest stories we hear in the news are those of extreme division? Um, are we really that divided? Or is it that there's a vocal minority of people across the political spectrum that hold the microphone? And as a result of them holding the microphone, all you hear is rhetoric and anger and animosity as opposed to conversations about how we can see each other's humanity. And when I was just given this keynote, I just came off to do this podcast. I, I have to tell you that I started off with a statement and I mean, I was shocked by how much support I actually got. I started off with the statement that I actually don't think we're as divided as we think we are. Not only do I not think we're as divided as we think we are, but in fact, I think there's a lot more that brings us together than we see and give ourselves credit for. So then why are we living through a time of extreme polarization, extreme division? Of course, we have real policy differences. Pick your issue, abortion, gun control, free speech, so what actually brings us together? And I think what brings us together 
and I want to illustrate this with the two stories of the Civil War movie and the tragic conflict in Israel and Gaza, is that while we disagree on a lot of the what, while we disagree on a lot of ideas, I think most people are united around a temperament, a mindset, a way of thinking. I actually think that most people, whether you're on the left, the right, the middle, up, down, blue, green, young person, older person, you got a family, you don't have a family, you're listening to the show for the first time or for many times. I think the one thing that unites most people right now in the country is a desire to be heard, to desire to see conversations across lines of difference, a desire to just have the problem solved. Um, I think people are sick and tired of the conflict entrepreneurs, and I think people are sick and tired of the outrage industrial complex. You heard that word on a recent episode where I did another solo episode with, where I talked about the stories of Kate Middleton, the Andrew Huberman podcast. We talked about the Baltimore Bridge collapse. I think we're living at this moment where we're incentivized to drive outrage and we're disincentivized to actually have those conversations. So how do these two stories, now that you've heard me ramble a little bit, how do these two stories of the Israel-Gaza conflict and the new Civil War movie that's coming out and making waves, how do they reflect this question of whether or not we're actually that divided? Well, in two ways. Israel-Gaza. If you look at the news and you look at what's happening in colleges and high schools across the country, you look in our local societies, what you would think is that it is nearly impossible to have a discussion on such a difficult deeply painful topic that you would think that it is nearly impossible to have real policy differences without, you know, being called an anti-Semite or without, you know, being called someone that doesn't care for the suffering of, of Palestinians that are, that are dying in Gaza. You would think that it is nearly impossible to have that conversation. And yet, I mentioned this in an earlier episode, after October 7th, we had over 21 of our different college campuses and different uh, and our chapters and different college campuses of Bridge USA host not only amazing productive dialogues, but since then, these students have bringing together Israeli students, Arabic students, Palestinian students. They're bringing together people of different perspectives. Professors even have these really difficult, intense, sometimes unproductive conversations. And what is the one thing we're finding through this very difficult process of having those conversations? It's that most people actually want to have the conversation. You know, most people want to find a solution. Who likes to live in, in perpetual conflict and war? And the question becomes, well, how do you find solutions? And my contention, I think your contention listening to this at the hopeful majority is the only way we create the possibility for solutions is to have the dialogue. Dialogue and listening and communication is a precondition, a prerequisite to be able to see each other's common humanity. Our college chapters and our student leaders across the country are having these dialogues, and yet all you see in the media is constant dissension and difficulty. And yes, I'm not saying that that doesn't exist, but what I am saying is that we need to do much more to elevate these stories of progress and engagement and listening. Because if all we hear are the conflict entrepreneurs and the division and the the, the Twitter games that we see, all we're going to think is that it is impossible. And so the, the conflict entrepreneurs, all we see is this constant dynamic. So if that's all we see, then there's no possibility for progress. And the one thing I can tell you hosting a show called The Hopeful Majority is that a precondition for hope is actually believing that something is possible. So we need to do much more. And actually, as this show progresses, I'm going to have on some of our amazing students that have actually hosted these dialogues, because I think it's important to hear their story and their journey. Because what I'll say is that at this moment where people think that dialogue and conversation is squishy, that we need urgent action, I'll tell you that I think at a moment where there's extreme conflict and high stakes, the most heroic and courageous thing you can oftentimes do is host a difficult conversation. Because that difficult conversation lays the precondition for solutions, whereas everybody else that's out there beating the conflict drum, beating the division drum, I don't actually know if they're interested in solutions. And that's the purpose of the hopeful majority. So that's story number one. Israel, Gaza, and what I'm seeing out of that tragic conflict, but also the success stories we're seeing and the need to elevate the stories. And again, it shows me and helps me think through this question of whether or not we're actually that divided, because if we were, then these conversations would be impossible. If the only thing we saw was the news, then we would think it's no chance for this progress and dialogue to occur. Second story, Civil War movie coming out, production studio named A24, directed by Alex Garland. So you may have heard of it, you may have not. I'll clue you in. I know it sounds shocking too. Civil War. It was released actually on April 12th, the anniversary of the Civil War, in an election year. And the movie is about 
tracking photojournalists as they make their way across the country in a hot civil war in the United States. And you can judge the movie for yourself. You can think through the movie for yourself. But one thing I'll say is that if you've spent any time, and man, I'm sorry if you have, but if you spend any time on Twitter and online on X and social media, you'll have heard a lot of this rhetoric around national divorce, around this idea of, well, maybe we should just split. Maybe we should just have a cold, quote unquote, a cold civil war. Believe it or not, people actually say that. So I was watching this movie with some of our team members at Bridge USA, and I was listening to the to the different reactions and perspectives. And I think the movie is really fascinating, uh, portrayed how bad a civil war would actually be. But more than that, I think it got to a core assumption and belief I have, which is that the people that talk about having a national divorce and people that talk about having a civil war and people that say that we should just split up, well, they've got, I don't even know if they're actually trying to solve the problems that lead us there. I think those people are, again, those conflict entrepreneurs. I don't think they reflect the reality of most people. Most people that I've talked to that have seen this movie, they're like, how do we try to solve and prevent this? I mean, part of the reason I feel so inspired to build something like the Hopeful Majority with you is because I think that you and I are trying to build an identity of people that exist above our parties to prevent conflict from occurring because there's so much more that brings us together. We have to work hard to do that. I bring you this movie story because... Watching this movie and hearing the reactions from it just affirms the point that I think most average people, most people like you and I that are just trying to live our lives, trying to figure out all the new stuff that's going on, but to also to, to put food on the table, people like us, we just want to solve our problems. We don't care for this conflict and this challenge. I wanted to bring you that because I think this movie really underlines the fact that not only are we not that divided, but I think most people are exhausted by the level of our division and the toxicity of our polarization. And I think at this moment, it's important now more than ever for us to do the hard work of seeing the commonality within each other, but more than that, empowering each other to host these conversations when it's nearly impossible. You know, the fact that you're listening to this and you're still with me, you're out here and you and I are every week releasing content to try and demonstrate that there is a hopeful majority of people out there that want to have dialogue and engagement that, well, you know, most, most of us are actually in the majority. And not only are we in the majority, but we're ready to build a world in which we see each other's understanding. So I appreciate you listening. I know this was a shorter episode again, because I'm, I'm on the road, but I wanted to to share this with you because I was just coming off this keynote talking to hundreds of colleges. We ask this question all the time in the whole majority. Are we really that divided? Got amazing young people hosting discussions on topics and challenges like the Israel Gaza conflict that you would never imagine is actually happening. And yet we're seeing it all the time. And, and you've got this movie that's been released about the civil, about a, a civil war in the United States. And it makes people think, well, gosh, is it really that bad? And I'm here to tell you as someone that spends time, I try my best to learn and meet different people, meet different Americans of all different stripes, ethnicities, backgrounds, identities, color. Most people want two to three basic things. They want to live, we want to live in a world in which we're safe. We want to live in a world in which our kids do better than us. We want to live in a world that has equal opportunity. We want to live in a world where we can meet each other's difference and respect each other regardless of what we believe. It's a lot more that brings us together than we give us ourselves credit for. And the question is whether or not we're willing to uplift this identity, this majority of people that believe in this need to have dialogue at a moment where all you see in the news points to extreme division. Yes, there's real divisions within our society. Yes, people have really strong beliefs. Yes, those divisions are real. But what I'm positing by asking the question, are we really that divided, is not by putting aside all of those divisions, but by giving us the recognition and belief that we can actually have that conversation, that it's not all lost. And you know how we know it's not all lost? It's the amazing growth of the show. You and I together every week, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, where you get your content. We're dropping shows like this. We're dropping conversations. We've had on, I mean, can you believe this? We had on people like Vivek Ramaswamy, Republican candidate, Andrew Yang, Marianne Williamson, amazing intellectual leaders like Ibu Patel. 
I think we just have to live in a world where we, we, we give each other the chance to be better. And not only do we give each other the chance to be better, but give each other the ability to have that difficult conversation. Because I'll tell you that one of the most inspiring things to see is when you're living in a moment of extreme division and you find the common humanity within each other. I think that's not only important, but it's courageous. Like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Leave a review for her on Spotify and Apple. I am so, so, so grateful for your support. All your feedback, all your thoughts, all your ideas are welcome because we're building this hopeful majority together. One episode, one interview, one conversation at a time. I'll see you next week.